some windy weather there. But here in the next few days in Utah, we have a bit of wet weather. Look yes, to look indeed. To. We'll check in with Alana for the latest. But honestly, Alana, I just want to kind of chat more about Kansas and get all the scientific stuff behind that. But we'll do that after the show, I guess. Well, I've got plenty of time for you, Emily. Always, you just let me know. We're or booked. devils, dust devils, all of it. The dust devils, we could talk about those. But we're going to talk about sunrise because it was gorgeous. And yes, winds is something we're going to be dealing with as we move into the middle of the week ahead of our next large storm system. But we have a few storms out there. Scott Taylor taking this gorgeous sunrise video. Tell me. That is not stunning. So the cloud covers start the day and it is still out there as we take the live view from daybreak where we've had a few cells popping up over towards the West and South Jordan area tracking along the Wasatch Front. Also seeing that in Utah County. As we look at the forewarn radar shows you exactly what we're seeing. We jump down south where it's fairly quiet, but that flash flood warning holds until 6 p.m. for Wayne County and in northern Utah. I'm going to get out of the way because plenty of lightning towards Duchesne, wet weather, including hail over Vernal and southwestern Wyoming has plenty of activity. Quiet now, quieter along the Wasatch Front. Utah County still has a few cells. And this near Park Valley, 50 mile per hour wind gusts and half inch size hail. What we're seeing here on the radar is going to continue to track east. So that's going to move over I-80 and the Great Salt Lake, which means as we head into tonight, the potential for active skies stays there. Provo with some echoes of moisture now quiet over Utah Lake. But we'll see what happens in the next couple of hours because Futurecast walks us through the timing. And you see that isolated activity holding on in northern Utah. Here we are by ABC for news at 10 Salt Lake County could get a shower and a heavy one at that coming through. Also, Cache Valley could see some activity holding on with isolated activity there in central Utah for tonight. Storms, showers, this is all associated with a low pressure system sending energy our way. But a larger storm is going to take shape. We quiet as we head into the morning hours. Notice how cloud cover will be around for your Wednesday. Enjoy the warmth because we get some changes. Okay, this is really pretty. Chris Williams catching the Mount Nebo loop. Are you ready to feel like fall? Mother Nature is. We've got the leaves changing and those temperatures will follow suit with this next storm system foliage bringing high color into the Wasatch Mirror Lake Highway over the Uintas and the Central Mountains right now. Now if you want to catch some of those fall colors stay away from Thursday and Friday because places like Logan Canyon and Guardsman's Pass will be tapping in to thunderstorms and then eventually heavy rain and the possibility of some snow. We're going to look at that here. We see those numbers falling into the 70s and eventually the 60s with unsettled conditions heading into tonight. Tomorrow we keep the chance of a storm mainly in northern Utah and southwestern Wyoming. Just a slight chance for northern and central Utah. Looks like Wednesday is going to be the driest day ahead of this next system which comes dropping in from the Pacific Northwest. OK, there's that low. It's got a cold front with it. Cold air behind it. We get winds ahead of it and the wet weather moves in. We're looking isolated showers on Thursday for the Wasatch Front. Notice how the front sweeps on through, heads towards southeastern Utah, and the wet weather Friday morning is left behind. Now, we won't likely see freezing in our valleys, but we are going to see colder air moving in, dropping our daytime highs, and in the mountains, look at that pop of snow that comes through over the Uintas, drying out by Friday evening, and then Saturday we officially start fall. Snow accumulation model brings it to the Uintas. Here we are by Saturday at 5 p.m., which means we could see that precipitation above 9,000 feet delivering some snow. I'm going to stay away from there, but it will be cool enough in the valleys as those temperatures dip into the 60s. Now let's enjoy tomorrow where we've got 60s, 70s and 80s expected along the Wasatch Front with a slight chance of a storm. 70s and 80s on the eastern side of the state, 70s for the I-15 corridor, 80s in St. George. All right, Washington County, you'll be impacted by this storm, but not in the way of wet weather. It's going to be cooler temperatures with the upper 70s by Friday. It's going to be beautiful, officially starting the season on Saturday with low 80s in Washington County. OK, I'm all right with that. Here's a look at the Wasatch Front. Slight chance tomorrow. Isolated showers Thursday. We're going to see showers on and off on Friday. And we go from the 80s to the 70s to hello 60s. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Mother Nature hears me. And by Sunday, we're back into the 70s. Thank goodness. I love fall. I just need to be <laughs> eased into it a little bit. But it's a big deal. We're seeing it on the seven day now. It's coming. It's definitely here. And the change of season is on Saturday. So we're officially going to start autumn. Mm. And this is a fall like system. No more monsoon moisture. This next storm pops down from the Pacific Northwest. Ooh, Break right. out the sweat. Some weather. exciting news. Thank you, Alana.